you know, the human thing to do is to focus on the world, see what's happening in the world, want to get in and fight against what's going on in the world uh, and see if you can't change the mindset of the culture. But the problem with that is we don't have a natural ability to do that. That some, you can have some natural success, but th that isn't how we win. It isn't how Jesus won. It isn't how the disciples won. Um, you know, you change culture by changing minds, how people think. And that's what scripture is good for, right? Like scripture is good for changing how you think. Sometimes it just tells you what to do. Um, and other times it tells you what to do and what the benefit is of you doing it sometimes which is the best is when you can understand why god's saying what to do what the benefit of doing it is <clears throat> and why he says so right like why is he saying this that god never will push back on you asking why he says to do something or why he loves something uh that you hate or hates something that you love because that's what goes on in the flesh. We love the things that God hates and we hate the things that God loves. He knows that he knows your flesh needs to die. So you might live. So um, I'm going to give you an example out of scripture. It's not Proverbs, but it's very proverb like it's first Timothy two. And Paul is giving wisdom. He's downloading wisdom to Timothy. He says, therefore, I exert exhort, first of all, uh, that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and all who are in authority. That we, okay, there's instruction of what to do, right? Mm. But then he says what the outcome will be. That we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. Mm. You want to lead a peaceable, quiet, and godly life in reverence? Well, then you better be praying and giving thanks for all men. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Er, for there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Jesus Christ, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Okay, what in the world is he even going after there? He says what to do, pray for all men, including those who are in authority. Well, at the time Paul was writing this, it was either Nero or the guy before Nero, but this is probably Nero hmm. who killed Paul, right? right. And, and certainly Nero was in authority, even if he hadn't become, uh, you know, ruler of the empire yet. So my point is, Paul is saying pray for all men right and so that you might have a quiet peaceful godly life in other words you want you want the kind of life that you want to have like that all of us want to have then do this and then god loves this if you want to be in the middle of something successful do what god loves do what god loves mm -hmm. it's why we read proverbs now here's the thing we think we can go fight and logically change culture it's not true that's not how the church ever changes culture. Look at what happened to the Roman Empire. It became Christian within a couple couple hundred years, two, 280 years. Now, I'm not saying that it became a perfect Christian empire. It didn't. In fact, there's no leaders in all of the Bible that are perfect leaders. David wasn't a perfect leader. The guy who actually wrote most of Proverbs, Solomon, certainly wasn't perfect. Hezekiah was a great king, but he wasn't perfect. And God never hides the imperfections of men because he doesn't want us to think, oh my gosh, there's some perfect man or woman out there that I need to mimic. You'll just fail. You'll just, you'll just fall off the pedestal eventually and the fall will be harder. So the reason that we read Proverbs is to change our mind so that we might have what's needed to change other people's minds. Sometimes Proverbs just gives you the simplest thing that you think doesn't even have some spiritual thing behind it. 
you know, in uh, Proverbs 11, effectively, it says God loves a fair balance. In other words, God loves a fair deal. We love a good deal. We love when we get stuff for free or next to free. God mm -hmm. loves a fair deal. You want to be in the middle of something God loves? You want your deal to be a deal God loves? Then mm -hmm. he loves a fair deal. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think God loves good deals. Oh, yeah, he, he does love good deals. And sometimes he does give you stuff for free because he thinks it's fair. And this is why you want to press in with God and go, is the business dealing I'm doing fair? Mm -hmm. You know, so just these simple truths that are in Proverbs Mm -hmm. Yeah, are, are what changes culture. It changes culture. You know, like probably the most known section of Proverbs is uh, where God says, or really uh, Solomon says by the Holy Spirit to not lean on your own, own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he'll direct your paths. Proverbs 3 verses 5 and 6. Yeah. So what what is it in that scripture that Solomon's trying to get across? Don't go with your own mindset. Don't lean on your own understanding. In in every way acknowledge him. In other words, let his own understanding come to you. And then he's going to direct your path. From there, from where? From being humble enough to know that your own understanding may not be the understanding you want to have. Mm. And that's changing your mind, right? By letting God change your mind. And like yeah. Christina is doing, right? This is one way of it, right? You're giving godly counsel to these girls. That yeah. godly counsel is changing the way they think. They aren't political po protesters trying to change the government. Jesus didn't try and change the Roman government. Mm -hmm. You can't find that in there. He tried to change well, he tried to establish the church. He, he tried to, to change those that wanted to follow God. He wanted to mm -hmm. change their minds so that they might live their lives right. And therefore, in turn, change the culture. Mm -hmm. Because if we all start thinking like God, trust me, the culture changes.